Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the whole elect of Israel, you Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. Got to give all praises on and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, the Most High, the Heavenly Father. His Hebrew name is Yahweh. Not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not God, not Elohim, not Most High, not Lord, not Yah, not Jah, not Ahaya, not Allah. It's Yahweh. And his only begotten son name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. Not Yahshua, not Yeshua, not Jesus Christos, not Jesus Christ, not Serapos Christos, not Yeshaya, not Yehoshua. It's Yahweh Shai. So got to give all praises on and glory. To Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rekha Quadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Ruel, who teach well, who are the apostles and elders of all of Israel, ready concepted or not. And a sincere salutation to all the Akim, pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four ends of the earth, the entire world, waking up the whole flag. And Shalom to the Atwath who are listening and learning, the few sisters who are listening and learning. I'm Isaiah from Jim Messalano Camp, coming to another lesson in truth, facts, faith, and edification. Another day that occasion, Lord willing, is beatifying. And this is a lesson that the brother Amawan Abad did. So I'm doing a re, I'm doing like a repost to this lesson. When I saw it, I thought about one precept that I want to bring out to further edify the flock. So Lord willing, is beatifying. And he titled it, The Mark of Cain. What I'm going to title it is, The Evidence of Gehazi. Lord, what is be edifying? So I'm coming on here to see if there's anybody out there that has the same type of vitiligo that I have because I was completely brown growing up my entire life until I was diagnosed with vitiligo when I was 14 years old. And now I'm like 99% white and... I mean, people don't even know I'm black anymore. So, because I only see around people like, you know, the Winnie Harlow. She has her spots. They're symmetrical. They stay. They don't expand. Mine expanded, like, completely over my entire body, and I have no idea why. Um, neither do the doctors. They they said it's going to do its own thing, and it's going to, you know, spread if when it wants to, where it wants to. And I'm, like, 99% white now. Um... I can show you my video pictures, hold on. Alright, exhibit A. See, you can see I'm a pigmented baby. You can see this is me in like middle school. That's my mom, she's white, but my dad is like super dark. And I was pretty dark at that point. Um, I was probably like 12 years old or 11 and I hadn't gotten it, um, any bit of like those spots yet. And then here we have when I was probably like 17 or 18. I didn't take, I didn't have any pictures to show when I was like just starting high school, but this is my pigment like a few years ago. And you can't see my chest right now, but I mean, the chest was already white. You know, my shoulders, my face. I don't know. Let me know. So. I'm going to title this, The Case of Gehazi. This is um, 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 1. It reads, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a man, he was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, with God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of, of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and sixty thousand pieces of gold and six thousand pieces of gold and ten chains of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now, when this letter is coming to thee, 
Behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man do have sent unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Parfar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. So you see, she showed you her flesh when she was a little girl, right? She was brown skin covered all over. Verse 15, and he returned to the man of God, he and all his company and came and stood before him. And he said, behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. But he said, as the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules, burden of earth? For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifices unto other gods, but unto the Lord. In this thing the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Rimmon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Rimmon, when I bow down myself in the house of Rimmon. The Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. And he said unto him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little while. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master have spared Naaman, this, this Syrian is not receiving at his hands that which he, he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. So Gehazi, going against Elisha's words, Elisha's will, because Elisha wasn't going to accept nothing from the man because it wasn't him. It was it was the heavenly father, Yahweh Shema was shot that healed the guy, right? So Gehazi like, no, I'm going to go get this. Behind it, behind Elisha's back, Gehazi was going to go get this, the gifts that, that Naaman had. So it say, so Gehazi followed after Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lightly down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master have sent me, which he's lying now. My master have sent me, saying, Behold, even now there, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men. So he, he done made up a whole story that this is coming from Elisha, but he's lying. He say, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. And Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver 
in two bags with two chains of garments and laid them upon two of his servants and they bare them before him. And when he had came to the town, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. So he didn't hit it and he let the men go and they departed. It reads verse 25, but he went in and stood before his master and Elisha said unto him, whence comest thou Gehazi? And he said, thy servant went no weather, right? So this got a lie. Verse 26, and he said unto him, this is what Elisha telling him, went not my heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments? and olive yards, and vineyards, and sheep, and oxen, and men servants, and maiden servants. Verse 27, this is what Elisha told um, Gehazi, the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from him presence, a leper as white as snow. So this chick here, she said her daddy, is dark skin. He could be a Jake. Her mom was a so-called white woman, right? She was brown skin when she was young, but now she is fully white, so-called white, right? But she's a Jake. So <laughs> she could very well be from the house of, of, of Gehazi, man, right? She could very well be from the house of Gehazi, man. This is uh, Leviticus 13 and 1. It reads, <clears throat> Let's get this. This is Leviticus 13 and 1. For some reason, my phone acting funny. Salakia. Salakia. Bear with me a moment, Salakia. Phone acting funny here. What backup phone did I use? Okay, so this is Leviticus 13 and 1. It reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of, the, of his flesh a rising, a scab, or bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priest. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh. And when the hair in the plague is turned white and the plague in the sight be deeper than the skin of the flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh and in his sight be not deeper than the skin and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut him up that the that the plague and the priest shall shut up him that hath the plague seven days and the priest shall look on him the seventh day and behold if the plague in his sight be at a stay and the plague spread not in the skin then the priest shall shut him up seven days more and the priest shall look on him again the seventh day and behold if the plague be somewhat dark and the plague spread not in the skin. The priest shall pronounce him clean. It is but a scab, and he shall wash. He shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the scab spread much abroad in the skin, after that he have been seen of the priest, for his cleansing he shall be seen of the priest again. And if the priest see that behold the scab spread off in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprosy. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall see him, and behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and it have turned the hair white, and there be quickened raw flesh in the rising, it is an old leprosy in the skin of the flesh, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean, and shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if a leprosy break out abroad in the skin, and the leprosy cover all the skin of him that hath the plague, for his head, even to his foot, whether so well the priest looketh, 
Then the priest shall consider and behold, if the lepers have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean. They have the plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. You see? So it say, but when the raw flesh appeareth in him, he shall be unclean. And the priest shall see the raw flesh and pronounce him to be unclean. For the raw flesh is unclean. It is a leprosy. What if the raw flesh turn again and be changed into white? He shall come unto him, shall come unto the priest. And the priest shall see him and behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. They have the plague. He is clean. So you see, it say um. So if the if the if the spot cover the whole body, man, then you are a clean leper, right? So you see, over the time she turned, she turned <laughs> to leper, and she could very well be from the house of Gehazi, man. I saw this lesson the brother put up. I just want to make this point. This is the case of Gehazi, man. That's what this is. It's the case of Gehazi. The Lord was edifying. Gotta give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rikar Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who well, who teach well, who are the apostles and elders of all of Israel, rather than accepted or not. And a sincere salutation to all the oxen pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the whole full elect. Shalom to the Lord who are listening and learning. You few sisters who are listening and learning. Hey, Lord, was edifying the water for tuning in. May you help your mouth shall continue to bless you in your houses. Stay prayed up. This is an example of the case of Gehazi. Until next time, I say Shalom. Wa Ababa. <laughs>